15-year-old boy dies after his e-bike collides with an ambulance in Salford. Police say they had been following him. The reality of the hidden chemicals in the sea campaign has highlighted a cocktail of drugs and pesticides connected to sewage spills. A very good morning from Taksim Square here in Istanbul, where thousands of Manchester City supporters will begin to gather ahead of tomorrow's Champions League final with Inter Milan. After more than 50 years, Rod Stewart is giving up rock and roll. He tells us he wants to focus on other kinds of music. Special occasion, maybe, just like Elton. Elton said last night, I'll probably do the odd gig, but no more touring with rock and roll. Everything has to come to an end sooner or later. And a weekend heat health alert has been raised from yellow to a more severe amber warning in eastern and southern England, as well as the Midlands. The amber alert indicates that high temperatures could affect all ages and impact the health service. Doctors warn that health services across the UK are struggling to provide safe and effective care for cancer patients. The Royal College of Radiologists, which represents many cancer doctors, describes the situation as a ticking time bomb because of what it calls chronic staff shortages. Rising interest rates are putting pressure on landlords with some considering to sell up, but that in turn could further squeeze the availability on the rental market and potential increase in the cost for tenants. Some landlords are also considering their future due to proposals for a ban on no-fault evictions in England. A former Daily Mirror royal editor said Piers Morgan, who used to be her boss, would, quote, inject information into her stories without explaining where it came from. In a hacking case against a mirror group newspapers, Prince Harry alleged that the papers unlawfully obtained private information about him, um, but Mr Morgan has consistently said no illegal news gathering happened on his watch. Uh, uh, Shall we have a look at the papers uh, yes. for today? Some of the front pages for you now, starting with the Metro, one of the Many reporting on those stabbings. This in a park in southeast France. A paper also featuring an image of a man carrying a knife in the playground as that attack unfolded. The Guardian reporting on that attack as well. The lead photograph shows the World Trade Center in New York shrouded in smoke. A story we're going to be talking about in just a minute, actually. These are the conditions drifting across parts of the USA and Canada, causing some real problems. Now, the Times carries news that mortgage deals are being pulled by lenders in a rush to raise rates. The newspaper says it's a blow to homeowners. And one of the most read stories on the BBC News website this morning features a mountaineer who's carried a 100 kilogram barbell on his shoulders up Ben Nevis. It was to raise money for the My Name's Doddy Foundation, an MND charity, motor neuron disease charity set up by the late former rugby, Scotland Rugby Union International Doddy Weir. That is very impressive. This morning's front pages then, and let's start with the Metro, their headline, stabbed in their push chairs, referencing the attack on four young children at a park in France. Well, the Sun reports that one of the victims is a three-year-old British girl. That's also the main story for The Express. Well, the Daily Mirror focuses on a woman who leapt into the path of the attacker to try to stop them. And the Telegraph leads on Ukraine, saying the long-awaited counter-offensive, well, it's begun. The Eye describes Britain and the US as rewriting the special relationship with the newly agreed Atlantic Declaration. Uh, but The Guardian points out that Rishi Sunak didn't get the free trade deal the government wanted. And uh, fresh turbulence in the UK's mortgage market as HSBC has become the latest lender to withdraw deals for new borrowers. Uh, that's in The Times. And The Mail asks whether NHS patients have the right to know if doctors treating them are transgender. The FT reports that the Financial Conduct Authority is to expand its investigations into claims of sexual assault at the hedge fund Ade Asset Management. Its founder, Crispin Ade, denies the claims. And, of course, if you want to see any of those front pages again or read the stories, scan the QR code on your screen.